As you know, radioactive decay is a random process, and this means you cannot predict precisely when a given nucleus will decay by the emission of an alpha particle, a beta particle, or a gamma ray. Now we're going to simulate radioactive decay using these wooden blocks. Now each block represents one nucleus, and we're going to throw them, and if the blue face lands uppermost, this represents a nucleus that has decayed. If it lands like this, it represents a nucleus that hasn't decayed. Right, we'll start off with our 100 blocks. Now, any that land with the blue faces uppermost are decayed nuclei, and we'll remove them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So we started with a hundred, and that means we have got eighty undecayed nuclei left. So we now throw those. Now each throw is going to represent a unit of time. So we've had throw one. That means one unit of time has passed. This is unit of time two. Throw two. How many decayed ones? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Now we had eighty to begin with, and eighteen more have decayed. That means we have got the remaining sixty-two. And do it once more, which is the unit of time. Three and throw three, therefore. Now we start with sixty two and we now have a further one, I mustn't drop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven decayed that time. So from sixty two we go down to fifty five. Now I'm sure you don't want to spend the rest of the day watching me throwing wooden blocks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop recording now and I will go on throwing blocks until either I have no blocks left with blue faces coming up, in fact no blocks left at all, or I have done 25 throws and still have some left. So that will be one complete session. I'm then going to repeat the experiment starting with 100 blocks a further nine times. That will have meant I will have thrown a thousand blocks. Well, there we are. I've done as promised. I've taken the rest of the readings. That means 10 complete sets, 25 throws for each one, which makes a total of 250 throws. Now you can see that at the bottom here, some of the 25 throws have reached zero, others have left three or one or two undecayed, if you like, nuclei. On the right hand side is the average of the rows from a thousand at the top down to nine at the bottom. And why so many throws? Well, it's a much better accuracy the more throws you take, if you can take an average. And that's what I've done. And you can see the graph there begins at 1000 and it's a beautiful curved line for what was a very simple experiment. Now, how does this relate to radioactive decay? Well, there's a thing in radioactivity called the half-life. It's the time for the activity to fall to half the original number. Or, if you like, in our experiment, the time or the number of throws for our number of blocks to fall to half. Now, we started with a thousand. There is 500. And the half-life, notice I put it in inverted commas for the decay, in inverted commas, is 3.8 throws. Now, 
whatever that means in terms of radioactivity. But if this had been a radioactive source decaying with time over a period of, let's say, 25 minutes, then the half-life for that radioactive source would have been 3.8 minutes. So a really nice analogy and a very good exponential decay curve.